would like to lead us in prayer? Are you able to pray? All right, ma. Shall we pray? Most precious Father, Jesus Christ, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the bright new day. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to live again today. Thank you for this lecture. Thank you for our lecturers. Thank you for all the students. Thank you for the grace given to us. Be thou glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we commit today into your able hands, O Lord. Please, Lord, give us your best wisdom and your sure mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you because we will honor your name. As we go, Father, go with us. In Jesus' name, I've prayed. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Success, for leading us in prayer. Uh, we have been talking about um, uh, the weapons that we use against the enemy. Um, and we've covered you know, all the weapons there. We talked about the armor of God. Um, uh, we've talked about faith. We've talked about uh, the word of God. And we said the blood of Jesus, you know, the way we apply the blood of Jesus is by understanding what the blood has done for us instead of, um, you know, simply saying uh, the, the blood. And um, let's be uh, looked at the name of Jesus. Did we, uh, class? Just a little confused here. Yeah, we have. We've done the name of Jesus. We also uh, touched on the power of the Holy Spirit and uh, praises. Okay, How we can praise God and that becomes a weapon for us uh, against the enemy. So uh, this is all about you know, coming against the enemy, overcoming the enemy. So I thought we could uh, share from our own lives if there have been instances where we have used one of these weapons and we have seen victory um, in our, you know, uh, wrestle against the evil one. So anything from your own lives, I think that will be nice because otherwise it's just, you know, I'm talking and then I don't get to hear your voices. And, uh, you know, that that's... That's not, uh, what What can I say? It doesn't keep the class exciting. So I want to hear your voices. So, so far we've learned about uh, overcoming the enemy. So anything from your lives you want to share? How did you overcome? What are some spiritual weapons that you have used so far? That'll be helpful. Sitkinu, any, any experiences? Like, ma'am, as of now, I have not witnessed, uh, witnessed any kind of this demonic uh -huh. thing. Okay, okay. But in your personal life, uh, Sidkenu, I'm sure, you know, because uh, um, uh, temptation, um, all those things are common, isn't it? You don't really have to have a different incident taking place. So... How do you deal like, with things like that? Like I mean, studies when like maths when I'm not getting it, my mother says just read Proverbs one seven. Okay. Claim it. Proverbs one seven. Claim it. Uh -huh. And after that, practice the sum you are trying. Then after that, like I will read this sum. I will read this Proverbs. And after two three attempts, I will I will like remember it. Like I have created that maths sum problem only. <laughs> that okay. Okay, okay, okay. That's that's interesting. So it's like uh, how Jesus in the wilderness, no, he said the, uh, he used the word, it is written. So go to the written word and then overcome. Okay, good, good. Yes, ma'am, yeah. like that only. Okay, thank you, Sitkinu. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, success, you have something to share? Yes. Yeah. You ask how to overcome the enemy. Yes, yes. Uh, my own is for my extended family my brother i came in the family where nobody nobody knows how to serve god purely idolatry and it has been a body to me being the only uh, 
Christian and a pastor in the family, I told God, I want to overcome such challenges, but give them the problem that will make them to come to God, to you. I started praying. Many of them, they are drunker, womanizer. And suddenly one of them, the overall, fell sick. And he went to the hospital and I told him, if we don't stop drinking, you may end up losing your life in a short time. So because of that fear of a medical report, God healed him totally. He stopped drinking and he stopped womanizing. From that one, moved to another one, moved to another one, and that was how God helped me to overcome the enemies of my family. That is why I say, and that is why I want to share it because God really helped me. It was a body to me because when we have a family meeting, they will go and buy alcohol, buy and be speaking. But today, if we have a family meeting, all of them, there is nothing like alcohol. There is nothing like a womanizing. So that is my greatest enemy for my family because it will be a, a wrong for only one person in the family to be raptured when I have the rest. So the Christianity should extend to the family members. And uh, that is what God has done for me. Praise God. Yeah, yeah, success. Uh, really inspired by your uh, your commitment and zeal for your family to be saved, and you know your uh, prayer. Now I don't know if you know we should pray for people to become sick or have a problem because God doesn't uh, give problems. But I understand where you're coming from, and I understand that. Uh, your intention was just so that they they will uh, God will get their attention, isn't it? Yes, because they refuse. I have preached, travel everywhere, both hell and land, mm -hmm. preach to them. They refuse. So the best option is God. I run to God. God, teach them a lesson. Let them come. Because if my words cannot convince them, God can convince them. So that is only channel. Because I'm not even happy they are because I end up paying some hospital bill, but they came out and started to serve God. So money I spend is not any to me, but them giving their life to God is my priority. Mm, yes, yes, success. Yeah, and uh, so happy to see uh, not only people turning to God, but there is evidence of life transformation. That is what. Uh, the gospel is about, isn't it? It's about uh, changed lives. And now you have uh, these relatives of yours worshiping together with you. What a testimony. You know? Praise God. And we pray that you know God will continue to uh, strengthen you as you serve uh, in his ministry. So thank you for sharing success. Uh, so nice to hear uh, you know, your stories because this whole thing is... Uh, our course is very, very practical. You know, I, I really struggle that this is on, uh, uh, this is online. If you all were in class, I, I know that you would have brought the roof down by asking questions. Uh, but <laughs> this is also a platform where you can ask questions, share your stories. So let's keep it uh, alive. Let's keep it interactive. Uh, any any others you would like to share how you have overcome the enemy? It can be anything. It can be mind games. It can be something that the enemy was doing in your family or in your church. But how did you overcome? So that's my question. So go ahead. Uh, anybody, please go ahead. Uh, Pastor, can I share? Yes, yes, Zeli. Please go ahead. Like, uh, during my initial journey as a Christian, like, you know, uh, I was crippled in the bondage of fear, you know, like, uh, I was such a fearful person, like, I cannot, uh, if, if it's around, uh, like, around 6 p.m. when it's getting dark, like, I cannot uh, go out by myself, it means, you know, fear was such a bondage, you know, like, but as I started to fellowship with the believers, and get to know about the word of God, you know, like Second uh, Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, it really liberated me. So I started to confess over my life and I started to declare over my life. And God really, the Holy Spirit is the one who really set me free and I'm free from that bondage. And after that, like uh, uh, whenever I get opportunity to minister who are in this same form of bondage, I uh, like, um, uh, you know, like, 
I'm able to encourage them, and you know, uh, you know, with that same freedom that uh, Christ uh, did to me, like I can really uh, minister to those kind of people, and it's uh, very exciting to see people being set free from all the bondage of fear, doubts, and confusion. So that's another thing, and uh, like uh, just like our brother success shared about his family, I just want to share a little bit about my family. You know, like uh, uh. uh like uh, I was first in my family to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And, uh, you know, it was really a struggle for me because uh, as a family, there was no unity in my family. There was division and God was far off from our mind. You know, like, you know, we never do prayer meeting and we were in debt. And also my in my family, uh, like... Uh, um, the spirit of, you know, addiction was really binding our family, especially my dad. Uh, he was really addicted to alcohol. And not only that, my older brother, he was also addicted to alcohol. But, you know, like uh, slowly, slowly over the years, I see breakthroughs, uh, God's restoration over my family. And, you know, it's a, such a miracle that, you know, like my dad was hospitalized for two, uh, two times in ICU. But it was the hand of God, the prayers of the believers was with him. And, you know, God really set him free and God healed him and God delivered him from the bondage of alcohol. And likewise, uh, in uh, God really worked in the life of my older brother who was really addicted, addicted to alcohol. And the doctor also gave him a deadline that if you continue on drinking, you're, you're not going to leave. But after that, you know, like... Uh, uh, he stopped drinking. It's because of the power of the Holy Spirit working in him, and now he's totally free. So, yeah, I just want to share and give thanks to God for all the restoration, healing, deliverance taking place in my family after we encountered the love of God. And also God miraculously delivering our family from all the deaths. It's just the hand of God, just the favor of God. So I'm so thankful to God for that. Yeah, praise God for that. Wow. Wow, Zeli. Uh, so encouraging because uh, I i mean, uh, everything, uh, nearly everything that we've talked about in terms of the weapons that we have, you said that uh, you use the word of God where you, you said that, you know, you have not received the spirit of fear and God liberated you from your fear. You talked about uh, the spirit of God. You know, he delivered us. He delivered us the spirit of God. So we, we saw how deliverance comes by the spirit of God. In fact, now that is one thing that Jesus said. If, uh, uh, if, if the spirit of God has come upon you, in this way, when he uh, cast out a demon in Matthew chapter 12, he said that uh, the kingdom of God has come upon you. So, you know, you've experienced the kingdom of God by the work of the Holy Spirit. And that's wonderful. God has delivered, you know, your family members from addictions. Uh, that's that's great. And, uh, you know, we, we thank God for that. And you also said the prayers of the believers. So, again, you know, another a weapon there that you have used is prayer as you've been praying and I know it's not easy at all uh, sometimes it takes years to see you know loved ones set free loved ones come to uh, the knowledge of God but uh, don't give up right don't give up keep praying keep speaking deliverance and such a powerful testimony you said uh, that the environment is one of division but you know god has brought that unity now so uh, god is at work god is at work and see this is this is what we want to see isn't it uh, it's not all theory yeah theory is there but theory uh, has to become practice only then we see the power of god and uh, personally you know you have experienced it and thank you for sharing uh, it, it it inspires all of us okay fine you know i can also experience liberty i can experience deliverance uh, in my family that i can experience a change of um, environment you know if there are negativity going on then okay we'll pray we'll we'll bind and we will see uh, the the you know the peace of God, the presence of God. So overall, what I'm hearing from Zeli and from uh, success and from uh, Sitkenu is that, see, as believers, we are overcoming 
the challenges that the enemy brings and the challenges are different for each one of us but praise god we all have the victory of the cross we all have our tools you know you have your uh, tools isn't it for now our tools are all this you have this one and you have your internet connection your laptop without the tools i can't i can't do what i need to do but when i use my tools then you know i can get the work done so god has given us the weapons you use the word you use prayer you uh, experience the power of the spirit praise blood of jesus name of jesus all this you put it to use and then you know we are we are able to overcome the enemy and tell him come on you know i will take dominion over you because god called me to subdue he called me to walk victorious so we should not let go of our position which god has already given us in christ jesus that's the whole point and all of us have to strive for victory uh, for ourselves and also when we see our family members or when we see our church people or wherever we are going to minister we are seeing people are people are experiencing um uh a, a, a kind of a, a a life where they're under attack and they don't know how to come out but you know we can we can be there and say hey this is not god's best for you so let me pray for you i want you to experience the way zeli said liberty freedom from bondage addiction blessings peace of god this is our inheritance so we are going to take our inheritance devil you can't you can't uh play with us we also have the weapons that we need okay so that's how believers should be use your authority use your authority okay and also share about the authority you know sometimes what happens we have some brothers and sisters in christ they come to us and they don't know about believers authority and they uh, keep saying oh the devil is doing this the devil is doing that the devil is attacking me like this but you can you can teach or you can you don't give them the wisdom and say okay brother i'll pray for you but you know what the bible says that the lord jesus has won victory over the devil so how about i'll pray for you how about you declare you know with maybe you give them a scripture and say god will lead me in triumphant victory in christ jesus you keep saying this you keep declaring this because jesus has won the victory so you're also equipping others and letting them know that you have authority don't let the devil crush you he's already crushed remind him that you are crushed it's not me it's you you are crushed so i am going to live an overcoming life so that's the whole point and thank you all of you for sharing and i pray that there will be more testimonies uh, in uh, coming out of your lives okay so we'll get into the next chapter here which is exercising our authority and dominion so when the devil comes against us in one way or the other how can i use my authority that's the question so there are different ways in which you know we are going to see that today um we can defend defend is uh, when you know someone is is coming to harm us we protect ourselves so we uh, we may hide or we may have some protective gear and we are saying you know hold up a shield so the attack will not touch us so that is defense but offense is you are you are posing a threat to the enemy or you are attacking the enemy directly so uh, that would be offense then we can also pray and intercede so that is another way in which we can go against the devil and we can see god's victory we can have declarations and decrees that we make um, so applying the word of god so that's another way in which we can overcome the devil we can have righteous actions i will explain more later there can be we can employ power of agreement in our situation we can have uh, the involvement of angels uh, who can come and assist us 
and we can work through authority gateways so authority gateways is boundaries you know we've learned about um the family structure we've learned about the church in a church how the authority flows from the leaders to the congregation um and, and so on so people who are placed in authority have a certain influence and they can exercise their influence so these are ways in which we can overcome the enemy so we will go over each one one by one so coming to defense okay how to exercise our authority and defend ourselves yeah so uh, what what we'll do is we will begin with defense and then we will go to uh, you know uh, offense so it will kind of flow defense and offense will flow okay so uh, come uh, defense as i've already shared with you basically we are protecting ourselves okay from what the devil is doing so how can we do this um you see god is a god who provides protection we see that in scripture when the children of israel they were coming out of egypt um god told moses there's going to be the plague of the first born so what should he do he, sh he should take the blood of the lamb and he should put it on the door post so when the angel of death comes it will pass over those houses and those people are not going to be affected or the uh, they will be spared in other words they are protected so we see throughout scripture that god gives us protection against the devil so we don't have to be afraid you know it's only when we don't have the understanding that god gives protection that we become afraid okay so understand that god gives protection uh, he gives a protective covering to his people so even in the case of passover we know that there's something special uh, th there was like a cover on them that the angel of death did not touch them okay so just by virtue of the fact that we belong to god there is a protection on us that is something we have to understand now we can also strengthen this protection how to strengthen this protection we can um, you know psalm 91 it says he who dwells in the secret place of the most high will abide under the shadow of the almighty you know i will say of the lord he is my refuge my fortress so what is happening here see god's presence is there with every believer not just every believer god's presence is there throughout the world he is omnipresent isn't it but the level of his presence varies based on our faith so those who are those who don't believe in god for them yeah god is present that's all but for a believer we know that oh he is with me the holy spirit is dwelling in me and god's presence is there right now covering me so for a believer that extent of the presence is very different the understanding of the presence of god is very different because now there is the holy spirit indwelling within the believer and not just that as we worship god as we uh, spend time in god's word you know the psalm 91 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high so there's another level of presence in which one dwells okay this is not like oh god is omnipresent there's no comparison for a believer who is dwelling in the lord you know prayer worship word uh, fellowship uh, walking in righteousness the presence of god is multiple times you know uh, greater than a believer who is not doing these things so there is a protection which comes from this kind of a presence of god it is as if you are it says no scripture you are in the shelter of the most high so when we are in the shelter what happens the rain can't touch us the sun can't scorch us isn't it uh, there is protection against the wind against uh, you know maybe some insects anything so shelter is protection so as a believer when i am taking the time to pursue the presence of god i can be assured that there is a covering 
a special protective covering over my life. Okay, so that is one thing. Now, when we study about the life of Job, you know, Job 1.10, uh, when Satan tries to argue with God and all and says, okay, uh, you have, you are the one, you have given him, uh, the, you know, you, you have uh, uh, done all this for Job and you know, there is a protective covering around him. Okay, Job 1.10. It says that there is a covering around him. How did Job get this protective covering? You know, we see in his lifestyle, he was a very devoted person. And, you know, he had a very consistent life of worship. So he worshipped, he offered sacrifices, prayer, and, you know, devotion uh, was, was the pattern of his life. So it is likely that just the way Psalm 91, we saw how God's protection covers us when we are pursuing his presence. So in the same way, even Job, right? Because of his consistent life of worship, there was a hedge around his life. Or in other words, protection. Why did that happen? <coughs> it came about because of his uh, actions okay so excuse me all this teaches us that as a believer i can defend myself or have already there is an existent protective covering but i can e dwell even more in the protection of god uh by living a life of worship, being consistent in my prayer life, consistent in, you know, everything, all my devotional uh, expressions of worship. You know, I, I do that. I spend time in God's word. And so defense, I'm already protected. We also know that God gives us angels charge over us. So as if, uh, you know, that it's like multiple multiple security system. So even the angels, uh, Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. So when we fear God, when we walk in righteousness, we also have the protection of angels around us. So there is already a defense. Okay. Now this is not to say that a believer goes and does anything. Oh, I don't have any risk because I'm already protected by God. No, wisdom is also what is necessary, isn't it? Now, if at all, you know, Psalm 91, uh, he who dwells in the secret place will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Okay, he is my refuge, he is my fortress. So if God is my protection, why do I need a roof over my head? The sun will not scorch me, isn't it? Why do I need an umbrella in the rain? God will protect me, isn't it? But you see, we must not take God's word and make it mean something, uh, you know, mean something without the practicalities of life. Because then we're missing out on the whole counsel of God's word and uh, the wisdom of God's word. Okay, the same Bible says the wise man built his house on a rock so there is a need to build a house and to live inside the house because there is a there is a protection that comes from the four walls and a roof over our heads so that's practical way of living life and wisdom which god has given us so i can't use these scriptures to put myself in danger that's the point okay use wisdom use wisdom now now that we have understood God gives us protection. Okay. And scripturally, uh, because uh, God has given me this defense, I have to uh, completely take charge and uh, not let the devil into my territory. So here are a couple of things that I can actively engage in to continue defending myself. So what are these things? You know, the Bible says, in James chapter 4, verse 7, resist, submit to God and resist the devil. Okay, resist the devil is like, you know, you're not letting the devil do what he wants to do. So those of us who have uh, 
uh, done arm wrestling we we can sense it right when you when you're arm wrestling with someone they are trying to bring you down but what are you doing resist put all your power and don't let the enemy bring you down that is resist so resist the devil and he will flee from you so that should be the way i defend myself oh devil you're doing this okay you're putting sickness on me you are uh, you know bringing confusion into my family no way i resist you in the name of jesus use the weapon right? what is the weapon here you are using the name of jesus okay but you are defending yourself so you can resist the devil uh we can also you know, resist the devil uh, as other scriptures point out and say give no place to the devil you know give no place so he'll st uh, stealthily try to come in little bit one small thought one small uh, suggestion in our minds and uh, one small lustful thought nothing nothing great you know and then uh, he he will probably just give a an explanation and say oh it's a 21st century uh, everybody thinks like this don't worry about it or uh, yo you're a young person if you don't think like this now then when will you think so justification right he'll just put that and then we might say okay now nah, what is there no no problem you know it's okay i am a contemporary individual if i had a thought like that there's no problem so there is a place the enemy has taken in our minds now then next what happens you know the way he works is he'll slowly inch his way inside the tent slowly come in and then you're like how did i get into this place of you know uh, lustful patterns of thinking and uh, or maybe uh, you know unforgiving patterns of how did this happen the enemy will generally he doesn't come in from the front door you know ring the bell and say oh here's my here's my visiting card uh, i'm a satan i wanted to have a cup of tea with you never he will never tell you what he's up to he's always back door entry little by little so that is why you know uh, scriptures tell us give the devil no place or give no foothold to the devil he just needs a crack and he's looking at the building all the time full building is standing it's perfect great he's not bothered about that he wants a crack okay show me a crack i will use that you know to to bring the building down so that's the way he works and we should know the tactics of the devil and thereby sorry devil no place you have no place in my mind your thoughts your suggestions have no entry into my mind uh, sinful things sinful habits because what does he do through sin open doors remember we discussed or oh, so sinful words sinful practices wrong words all this is what it's like okay come devil i'll give you few inches okay it's raining outside so let me give you a little bit shelter don't ever do that because that is what he wants he will come in and damage everything so resist him don't give him any foothold stand against okay so stand against the devil so what are we doing you know we keep saying no devil no you can't you can't stand against the devil no we should never succumb to what the devil is doing you know when we see sometimes let me just give you a practical uh, example you know maybe mm, there's confusion in the home and uh, day by day you only see more and more confusion we can come to a place where we say i give up what is this you know uh, my prayers are not working so that is when you are no longer resisting the moment you say okay i give up you know your hand will come down but as a believer in my defense i have to resist the devil till i mean i with everything that i've got i say no devil yeah, yeah what uh, this morning even john said in worship right um uh, there's rejoicing in the tents of the righteous so you declare that and you say no that is my inheritance maybe right now it's not there but i will resist you you cannot do this in my family so go against the devil resist the devil don't give him any foothold 
foothold maybe i also join in in the confusion i also join in the quarreling no no foothold for you devil instead i am going to pray i am going to speak shalom i am going to bind the the spirits the demonic spirits of confusion in my family so in all these ways i am doing my part to resist the devil and stand against whatever he is doing you say no you can't do this so no no devil keep that in your mind no devil that should be my attitude when i'm seeing anything that is my inheritance what are our, what is our inheritance the promises of god peace joy victory uh favor healing liberty deliverance whenever it's moving away from my inheritance not for myself or for the people that i am ministering to i'll say no devil no way i'm not letting you do this that is resistance so we have to stop him from what is his job no thief comes to steal kill and destroy so you can say i resist you i am resisting you in the name of jesus okay and that is something we say but we can also do it do it through our prayer do it through our actions do it through um, you know spending time in the word of god and all that so you resist the devil that Uh, in Ephesians six twelve, we learn that you know, we are not fighting against, or we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. Okay, so uh, we don't we don't when we talk about enemies, right? Overcoming the enemies. Our enemies are not people that we have to understand. Okay, who are our enemies? Our enemies are these demonic spirits. so we have spiritual enemies that is why we are using spiritual weapons against them we have to wrestle against these demonic powers and you know in a wrestling match how does it look you know it's not uh, a one minute match isn't it sometimes it takes a couple of minutes and what is going on in that uh, wrestling match there are uh, two individuals both are strong enough they are continuously putting pressure on each other it is it is uh, uh, like a personal uh, conflict you know they have with with one another it's intense it's intense at times you know sometimes one kind of brings the other one down but the other one pushes their way up so when you're watching all this you recognize that is the way our spiritual wrestling with the demonic forces look uh, look like so here we are praying 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 and then what happens you know we may not see the results right away so we intensify we intensify okay i decide okay i am going to fast also for the salvation of my loved one then you you say okay uh, fine you know i am going to declare these scriptures then maybe you begin to see some changes in your loved one they meet somebody and they are sowing the seeds of the gospel into their lives and you're so happy you're like wow you know i'm winning this match and then the next thing you see is you know your loved one has uh, gone into some addictive habits and you're feeling so bad you're like oh no how could that happen so again you're wrestling you no know, it's intense it's like a personal conflict against the devil where we are up against the devil and you know we are just battling it out so it might take a while continuously we are fighting with the devil so it's a, it's an intense spiritual personal conflict with the devil but what are we doing we are saying we will not let go of our position you do what you want to do but we will not leave you devil you can't easily enter here and do what you want to do okay so that is the attitude a believer who knows their authority a believer who knows the victory of the cross a believer who understands their inheritance their position in christ will take this is the stand they will take they'll say no i will not let you devil i will not let you so you're putting up a battle against the devil and we are here contending against him we are here to oppose the demonic works which he is doing and you know uh, this is where you you understand that you know it's we are putting up a good fight against the devil and how long should we fight against the devil anyone how long do you think we have to fight against the devil can you put a limit to that so once i have wrestled against the devil for my my family member salvation is the battle over
no okay so when she says no then how long is it till the end either second yeah. coming of jesus correct or when <laughs> leave True. the earth <laughs> correct so thanks john as long as we are here the wrestling is not going to stop okay because you see we uh, one peter 5 8 and 9 we all of us are happy to take a vacation isn't it we love to take a vacation oh i worked so hard this year please two days you know give me uh, sir give me two days i want to go somewhere but think about the devil he is not excited about any vacation he doesn't want any vacation for him it's like i am on the job i will be on the job to you know get each one of these people down that is his assignment so 1 peter 5 8 and he's like a roaring lion looking just like ready to pounce when our enemy carries that attitude you just think about it okay okay maybe physically we are on a vacation but spiritually we have to be on the alert at all times because the wrestling against the devil will never really end okay uh, but we have to pray and we have to ask god god give me the grace give me the strength and the more we are in the word the more we are in uh, you know in our in our close walk with the lord god gives us that capacity where we can be uh, have you ever heard that joke where a uh, 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 father tells his uh, son uh, you know who who is you know like uh, angry with the father this and that standing up and arguing with the father uh, he tells the son uh, you sit down so then the son is very upset uh, he is not ready to sit down but the father again tell no you sit down and then finally he sits down but he tells his dad but i'm standing on the inside you know so it's like that attitude where you're telling the devil no no i will not leave you no matter what so when satan is you know waiting to pounce on us there's no downtime and this wrestle is a continuous wrestle against the demonic powers and as a believer we have to position ourselves and uh, you know be ready okay intense come on i am up for it and go 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 keep going after the devil and we will see you know uh, the the um protection of god's promises over our lives and we will walk in it okay so next quench all fiery darts these are all ways we are talking about defending okay quench fiery darts quench fiery darts if you recall i told us that uh, shield of faith okay you use the shield of faith and satan is sending against you temptation and you just hold like you can imagine no the whole animated thing you turn your shield this side it comes it falls off and then you know you're just walking through your life and next you know he he brings um, some accusation against you it comes it hits the shield falls off so we are here to quench all fiery darts so satan is planning how can i how can i you know get this person down so i remember this long ago when i first started preaching uh, once i think some sermon pastor said that uh, uh you know sometimes you know the enemy the, the best way he will try to get us is not by what others are saying okay sometimes our worst enemy is our mind and uh, if he can get some accusations into our mind he can pull us down especially you know when we are serving god uh, maybe confidently we go we do whatever god has called us to do and people are telling hey how can you do you don't have experience this and that but uh, other people's words don't matter to us and we are strongly doing god's work but maybe you know we we uh, are by ourselves and then the enemy puts a thought in our own heads where he says mm, how how can i really do it you know or some accusation no but i am not this i am not so that's when he can get you our own minds you know will be faithful to deplete our strength but we should never let that happen you know so satan is ready from outside inside fiery darts he'll be waiting how can i get this guy how can i get this lady and so for us as a believer my faith is always up 
ke you are keep our faith up and you say no god has called me he is faithful that's what the word says he who called me is faithful you know and god gives grace that um, uh, that you know i have all uh, what what is it all sufficiently to uh, abound in every good work god is at working Uh, in me to will and to do his good pleasure i can do all things through christ who gives me strength so what am i doing my faith level is high so whether externally or internally he puts thoughts in our minds my my shield goes up and i say come on devil no this fiery dart is not going to work against me i will fulfill god's purpose for my life okay so you know it basically this whole thing about resisting the devil and fighting against the devil is if we need that spirit that fighting spirit from inside okay now that i that doesn't mean all of you start looking like you know some uh, warriors when you go to church this sunday and pastor will be like what happened to you why do you look so angry so i mean keep the anger in your spirit because it's our battle is not against flesh and blood but inside we need that we need that spirit that says no devil you can't do this i will not let you do it so then we are resisting him we are in intense wrestling uh, against whatever he's up to hold your faith up you know quench his fiery darts okay whatever comes use your faith and you know just kind of slam the attacks of the devil so that's the way i'm going to resist now how do i go on the offensive against the devil so when i go on the offensive uh you know there are many ways in which i can do that and we will talk about it now when it comes to taking on the devil it will also depend on the situation it will depend on um you know who's involved whether an individual is involved in it or you know i am involved in it and all that so uh, from scripture we see a couple of ways in which we can offend you know go on the offensive against the devil so we will look at those examples and apply it in our own lives so the first one here is rebuke okay there are some action words which we can use rebuke or command okay we find that jesus rebuked jesus rebuked the demons in luke chapter 4 there is an instance there was a man who was possessed by demons uh he rebukes those demons and you know they uh finally like they come out of that man uh, also we see that paul the the girl in uh, philippi he rebukes not the girl but he rebukes the demon mm, uh, because it go it was going around you know making her say things like oh these men are from god listen to them and also he got frustrated paul and finally he rebukes that demon and it comes out of us so this is one way in which we can counteract what the devil is doing you know you can rebuke i can rebuke we can rebuke and we can command in the name of jesus we can issue a command and say you know i rebuke you in jesus name you know rebuke is um, i know in all your uh, local languages uh, you would be using these words uh, it's like scolding scolding the devil if if anybody is being unruly in class we've seen that isn't it our teachers uh, you know they they would uh, to correct us they would say hey don't do that you can't do that so similarly we are just crying foul you can't do that devil i'm i'm scolding you right now i'm rebuking you and i'm commanding you stop it or you know don't do this so basically we are expressing expressing our authority through a rebuke and a command so there are times in scripture where you see uh, you know these demons are saying something oh this is the son of god uh, jesus why have you come here and you find jesus he rebukes he says be quiet and you come out of this person so and the response to that authority the demons listen they obey and they follow so in the same way when we take authority in the name of jesus and we rebuke and command the devil you know not to do something or you come out what happens it has to the demons have to 
listen so we can use this you know this uh, if you want to call it a method you can use the method of rebuking the devil and demons okay so we've run out of time let's go for a break we will come back and look at some of the other ways in which we can go on the offensive against the devil okay so yeah thank you class see you in in uh, 10 minutes yeah thank you